Hi everyone, today we're gonna have a look at Spirit Science lessons 7, 8 and 9. Yeah, three of them, but it's actually gonna work because there's a common theme and um, I'm gonna ignore the parts that don't really relate to that. I might return to those later on, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get going. Now we can start talking about dimensions. Oh joy! These wheels are some of the oldest symbols known. Nobody knows what they are, but this is actually proof that the Egyptians not only understood the flower of life, but they lived it. That's an argument from ignorance. If we don't know, then we simply don't know. They're changing directions 90 degrees, and in doing so, they're changing dimensions. Wow! Jordan got something right! If you move along the x-axis and turn 90 degrees, then you're just moving along the y-axis. You are changing your y-coordinate without affecting your x-coordinate. So yes, x and y are different dimensions. Probably at this point we should get a common understanding of what dimensions are. Like third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. What are we talking about here? Most people think of dimension in terms of time and space, the x, y, and z axis, with time becoming the fourth dimension. This is not what we are talking about. No, you just said... They're changing directions 90 degrees, and in doing so, they're changing dimensions. Who needs internal consistency? Everything in this world is a waveform, or can be seen as sound. No, stop. All sounds are waves, but not all waves are sounds. The dimensional levels are nothing but different base rate wavelengths. What's a dimensional level and what's a base rate wavelength? Once again, Jordan is introducing completely new terminology without even trying to define what the words mean. If you were to change the wavelength of your consciousness, and in doing so change all of your body patterns to a wavelength different from this universe, you would literally disappear out of this world and reappear in the one you were tuned in. Okay, so we don't know what a base rate wavelength is, but everything in this universe must have the same wavelength. Got it. It's been theorized that the base rate wavelength that we're currently living in is 7.23 centimeters. Theorized by... In a spiritual sense, the 7.23 wavelength is Om, the Hindu sound of the universe. I can only trace this claim back to Drunvalu Melchizedek, and he doesn't even try to support it. But... so what? Not only that, but if you were to take 100 people and measure the distance between their eyes, the average length is 7.23. Same with the distance from the tip of our chins to the tip of our noses, and the distance across our palms. This is also irrelevant. Just because 2 or 3 or 28 distances have the same length, that doesn't mean they're related. But you know what? If you try googling average distance between eyes or average width of a hand, you'll find that it's not even true. Bell Laboratories found this wavelength when they were setting up the microwave system around the United States. They found the static in their system because they chose a wavelength just slightly longer than 7.23 for their system. Read the title of the article. What they found was the cosmic microwave background, and it peaks in intensity between 1 and 2 millimeters. But it's found throughout a large portion of the microwave band. This has nothing to do with any base rate wavelength of the universe, whatever that is. As you go up in dimensional levels, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter, with higher and higher energy. As you go down in levels, the wavelength gets longer and longer, with lower and lower energy. How do we know this is the third one? And remember before when we established that everything in our universe has the same wavelength? Well, yeah, apparently... Insects and crystals and plants don't exist in our universe. There's quite a bit going on with meditation than most people realize. The average person will tell you that meditation is simply a tool to calm you down, when in fact, that's probably the least important thing it's good for. Let me guess, it leads you to discover really deep sounding mumbo jumbo that has absolutely no useful application? We're gonna talk a lot more about that soon, but first I wanna tell you a story about Robert Monroe. He found out more about the nature of the universe than any modern scientist could tell you. Really? Let's hear it! The stuff that he has written about seeing and doing out of body is incredible. He's completely mapped out a whole nother world. Yeah, can we get to the discoveries he made about the real universe? As human minds, we are what we think. We are also what others think. Most of this has little to do with our physical bodies when we go below the surface. To deal with this more closely, let us create a model of the human mind as it is and operates in practice. A pragmatic model, if you like. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> 
So moving on. So uh, to sum up, this guy's amazing understanding of the universe is nothing but the kind of cheap pseudo psychology you get from a self help guru who sells easy answers to idiots who don't realize that psychology is actually a science. I am not impressed. What is the point of meditation? I know I'm going to regret this, but yes, Jordan, what is the point? See, the traditional intent of meditation is not to eliminate suffering by lowering blood cholesterol or stress, but to eliminate suffering by shifting perspective. The process transcends and changes our sense of self so that our problems seem less meaningful and less troubling. The point is not to reduce the physical cause of discomfort through improved health, but to change the importance we place on that discomfort. Look, as I said in part one, be good to yourself, but not to the point that you become a selfish asshole or ignore your responsibilities. And don't ignore real problems. Instead, try to solve them. Some problems have real consequences. And ignoring the problem means facing those consequences, whether you want to or not. To advise people to not seek medical or psychological help when they need it, but instead just meditate and make the suffering caused by the problems go away, well, that's actually harmful. People can die as a result of following this advice. But you know, I noticed something that might actually be worse. Jordan, don't have kids. You're lying in your bed, eyes shut, completely relaxed, and totally awake. After a few minutes, you feel your body becoming heavy and numb, and then you start rising up, floating a few feet above your bed. You fly through the ceiling and into the sky and look down at your house, becoming smaller and smaller, and soon you can see the curvature of the earth. You think of a friend of yours who lives across the world in Sweden. By thinking about him, you consciously go to him and you zoom across the world, and soon you're coming down into a house. You see your friend eating cookies at his computer. He's wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt. You wake up and go to your computer. Your friend is on Skype and you tell him what you just saw in your dream. Your friend gapes in amazement. That's absolutely right, he says. All evidence supporting this stuff can be dismissed as coincidence or confirmation bias. No one has ever been able to acquire any information from astral projection under controlled conditions with a degree of accuracy better than chance. Do I really have to bring up James Randi's million dollar prize again? Before we continue, let's talk a little more about dimensions that we established an understanding of in Lesson 7. Okay, I'll sum this up. Jordan thinks that when we dream, we change our uh, wavelength. But we don't disappear. But in Lesson 7, we established that if you change your wavelength, you disappear from the universe, and you clearly don't. So again, he's contradicting himself. And if it's just the consciousness that changes dimensions, why is it that it can observe this dimension? Oh, and by the way, thoughts and emotions don't exist in our universe, apparently. Jordan is saying that actual, measurable processes don't exist in the universe where they are being measured. Just... Wow. For many people, this happens randomly while asleep, becoming conscious in the middle of a dream. If you haven't, odds are somebody you know has. This is a very common experience, which is also known as lucid dreaming or out-of-body experience. Sure, I've actually experienced lucid dreaming myself, and sure, it's a cool thing. But it's just a dream. Dreams are in your head. That's it. This is well known and empirically verifiable. You can actually hook up electrodes to someone's head and measure their brain activity while they're sleeping, and you can actually tell that they're dreaming. Scientist Stephen LeBerge has actually proven that the phenomena known as lucid dreaming is real. Lucid dreaming and astral projection are actually the exact same thing. Many mainstream scientists will say that astral projection is unproven. However, now we've proven lucid dreaming to be real. So naturally, if you accept lucid dreaming, you have to accept astral projection as well. No, not at all. Lucid dreaming is a real phenomenon. It's when you're dreaming and you realize that you're dreaming. In astral projection, you're actually leaving your body. Ugh. I, I can't believe I actually have to explain this. 
People complain about how I'm so condescending. These people believe that dreams are for real. Oh, and yeah, what do they say in response to critics like myself? You're just being closed-minded. Look, to ask someone to believe something that's unsupported, untestable, or even demonstrably false is not to ask for the person to be open-minded. It is to ask for blind faith. And the thing about faith is, faith doesn't lead you to believe something that's true. It leads you to believe whatever it is you choose to have faith in. And it blinds you to the possibility that what you believe may actually be false. To be blind to the possibility that you're wrong is the very definition of what it means to have a closed mind. See ya.